flabbergasted You choke your little bastard Hard times you know we have it Cause times is getting drastic So back up off me, you're softy That stress is too weak Token feelings, west side you Boy villains in the street Blow all night, volcanic eruptions Lung filled up for spontaneous combustion You're lunching on this bombest thing you ever tasted Split the blunt, roll it, light it Since I'm drinking, now I'm wasted At a 50 blunt session Done puff more than the Pope gives out blessings and confessions My third eye just opened up Kick back, relax, create this funky stuff as I puff Tide, indoor northern lights on a platter My mind scatters, busting new subject matter Off the icky, sticky green Just because I puff every day, am I a fiend? It's a dream, plus chronic feels Demonstrating skills, all up on this real or real Tingle what I feel Throughout my whole body, assist by a blunt like magic dishes to Vladi. Thank you for joining me for episode number 10, A Tale of Two Loves. I had a writer tell me 10 is the threshold for if I was going to continue or not. That was around show number 6 when they told me this, so I guess this show is like a mile marker of some sorts for me. I did keep this number in the back of my mind, I'm not going to lie. So in celebration of show number 10, I'm going to switch it up slightly. For the first time on I Am Astrology Readings, my voice will not be the only voice you hear coming through your speakers. There is a cool story that goes behind what you're going to hear. I mentioned that I write my podcast to the person you will hear. They were kind of taken back slightly that I did this. I said, pick any subject you want and you know something about. Then you have a voice recorder on your phone. Start talking. See if you can talk for 20 minutes straight without pausing, looking for a thought or messing up. I knew the answer, but a little while later, I got the response. That shit is hard. Then I said, write something about the same subject. Then try recording that, which she did. And that is the recording that you will hear today. Now, what started off as showing someone the difference between grabbing the mic and freestyling a show and grabbing the mic with a thought and a subject and staying on point is another thing. And it turned into today's show. While listening to her recording and knowing her birth chart, I started hearing aspects of her chart coming through her story as she was telling it. If you knew what to look for, you could hear it as well. When I say look for, I mean the what, the where, the how she is using words and what she's using them to describe. And with her permission, I'm sharing it with you guys and we will break down about the energy she's expressing after. Hello, everyone. And by everyone, I mean Claudia's brain, ears and mind. For as long as I can remember, probably almost 10 years now, actually over 10 years now, weed, weed, weed has been my preferred substance to numb, entertain, and connect, as well as disconnect, primarily disconnect. The first time I tried weed, I was a mere 16 years old. In retrospect, I tried it because I was increasingly curious about what the fuss was all about. Apparently, all the gifted kids at my school smoked pot, and I was in the gifted. I will admit, I suppose I was under some peer pressure to do it. I remember I picked up all my friends from school the day that I tried it. It was my 17th birthday, I believe. I remember waking up extra early. My mother was getting ready to go to work, and I pretended as if I was going to school. I arrived at the school parking lot in my olive green safari looking Land Rover Jeep. Right before the bell rang, my friends were already waiting for me. They quickly get in the car so that we don't get caught skipping school. Duh. We head to the nearest Burger King for breakfast and when we arrive at my house, I already had two boys waiting for me there. That used to happen a lot. I was gonna try weed for the first time. I remember it so vividly. My friend brought his bull pipe. And this kid I had a crush on because he brought the weed. When they put the pack bolt to my mouth, I remember not knowing how to inhale or even exhale for that matter. 
I also remember telling them that I was high even though I didn't even know what being high was like. Obviously, for all I knew, I wasn't really high because I probably hadn't even taken a proper hit. <laughs> Looking back now, I don't think I got high the first time. I just pretended like I did, and I'm not even sure why. Perhaps to entertain? Or maybe to seem cool that I was the only female in my group of innocent friends that actually had the boss to smoke weed at my parents' house while they were away at work and we were skipping school on my birthday. You are so cool, Claudia. I'm not completely sure what my thought process was back in those gruesome teenage years where all I wanted was to fit in and be cool. I wanted to be accepted because even though I lived in a super diverse city, I wasn't really from that diverse city. I was, or actually am, an immigrant. I am an only child. I was overprotected by my parents till maybe just a few years ago. Actually, I was overprotected by my mother. I was shy. I was weird. I still am. I was different. I still am. Um, actually, I think I just felt like I was different because for some reason I've always been really great at camouflaging. But anyway, back to my original point. My relationship with weed has been just that, an actual relationship. After a small experiment on my birthday, I moved on to alcohol, which made me feel better. We wasn't my best friend during those late teenage years. Alcohol was. Alcohol was my best friend. Fast forward to being 18 years old and entering in my first relationship with the love of my life, whom just so happened to be my then ex-best friend's ex-boyfriend. She's currently now my friend again. And I technically spotted him first. Those first couple of years together were actually a roller coaster ride, but would my soul have had it any other way? I think not. I was deeply and intensely in love. I lost my virginity to him. I gave him my body, mind, and soul. I loved him for everything he was and everything he wasn't, and he really wasn't a lot of things. I cared for him deeply. I wanted to make his pain my pain. I wanted to soothe him. I wanted to make him feel good. I wanted to mother him, to spoil him, to love him unconditionally. Because that is what I thought first loves were like. Unfortunately, I don't think he felt that same intensity that I felt. He had his own demons to tend to. So, for those years, I didn't touch weed. Partly because Michael detested it, and I wanted to please him in every way that I could. He wanted to prove to his unborn children that he was the only one out of his entire generation and or class that had not gotten hooked on pot. I'm not sure why he wanted to do that, but that was his reasoning as to why we shouldn't smoke weed, Claudia. I barely drank. I did experiment with MDMA. With I actually loved MDMA. <laughs> but, uh, but weed was always out of the question with him. Until this one fine night that Michael gave me the green light and said, I think I want to smoke with you. Do you want to? I felt like literally the heavens opened up and I was seeing God for the first time. Of course. Of course, babe. Of course. Of course, I said. What more could I want than to smoke some delicious pot with my boyfriend slash best friend that I was so in love with? Imagine getting lost in clouds of marijuana smoke with someone you love so deeply. It's like a dream come true. Well, it was all downhill from there. More than 20 pounds of body weight gained and who knows how many pounds of weed smoked. I was in really deep. My relationship with weed was actually just getting started. Weed got me through my mom's imprisonment. It got me through really ugly and terrible times I had with people in our relationship. It got me through various other relationships after that. Um, but in my relationship with people, you know, having to live together, losing our intimacy, um, having on and off, again, breakups. Weed got me through all of that. Every time my life would come crashing down, weed was there to save me and soothe me. It was my natural medicine. It held all my broken adolescent pieces together. It helped through trauma and so-called healing. After and I broke up, we literally became my best friend. We did everything together, and I mean everything. If I didn't have a bowl packed in my car, I was not a human. 
It's been my crutch all these years and I think I'm finally arriving at a mental space where I don't want it to be my crutch anymore. I want weed, pot, cannabis, ganja, whatever you call it, to be a sacred medicine and healing tool for those that are in desperate need of relief without it becoming an addiction or a crutch. But I don't know if that's possible. I want it to be all of that because that is what it was for me. I guess as I am saying these words, I'm actually arriving at an understanding that perhaps this beautiful plant has been my own version of a therapist. I think I know that for a fact. I'm not sure if I am ready to transition to a real life therapist just yet. I think I have some issues to contend to in regards to that. But I do think I'm ready to take the training wheels off and discover other sober relationships I can have with life and with nature. For now though, I think I will probably continue to smoke a J and improvise until I can finally get rid of this, what I think is now a demon in my life. Simply because it doesn't give me the happiness that it used to. I used to feel so elated about being able to smoke weed. It was awesome. It was everything I ever wanted. It made everything feel better. It made me feel amazing. It made me feel like I was closer to the universe for some reason. But I don't know if it's something to do with age or maybe I'm maturing or maybe my body doesn't need it anymore. But... I don't feel that way anymore. In fact, I actually feel like perhaps I lose clarity every single time I go to weed. I'm not exactly sure what that means, but I guess, you know, stay stay tuned. Stay tuned and find out. Find out what this means to me. Find out what this means for me. Sorry. So yeah. Uh, I love you, Claudia. I know that where you are in the future, you are killing it. I hope. I hope that you're happy. I hope that you love yourself more today than you did yesterday. Because that's what it's all about. It's a journey. It's a journey of love. Of self-love. It's a journey of loving God. It's a journey of loving God in you. It's a journey of understanding that God is you. That love is God. And that God is love. I love you and I'll be seeing you. Peace. Thank you, Claudia. Beautiful story and thank you for letting me share it. In my second podcast, Dope with Dog Food, I talked about Saturn and how it's the timekeeper and how we have seven year itches. It's when Saturn is 90 degrees, which is called a square in astrology. And when it's 180 degrees, which would put it exactly opposite, it's called an opposition. And the return is when it comes all the way back to where it started, which takes 28 to 30 years. Claudia is currently entering into her Saturn return. She just made 28. She has Saturn and Aquarius in her natal chart. One thing I found interesting is the story she tells happens during her Saturn opposition, which would have been around 14 years ago, spanning a two and a half year span. Entering into her return, she is reflecting back on her opposition. The next thing I want you to know is Claudia is a Pisces. Pisces love escapism of all forms. Things like drinking, drugs, video games, music, even books. Anything that takes them from this world into the land of dreams and illusions. Just by the subject, you can hear the Pisces. She has Saturn and Aquarius in her natal chart, which would put Saturn transiting, traveling, through the sign of Leo during the time all of this is happening. When you think Leo, think center of attention and wanting praise. To get attention and praise, you not only have to be part of a group, but do things the group is doing to fit in. 
She says she don't know why she did it, perhaps to entertain. You entertain for praise, which is Leo energy. She talked about the gifted kids and how she was the only girl hanging out with the boys, wanted to be cool and fit in. She also talked about how she was different in many ways, even culturally. All of this is pointing to her Saturn being in Aquarius in her natal chart. During this time, she's being shown how different she really is and beginning the 14 year journey to all of that coming to a head, the Saturn return. It's like the last 14 years has been building up and preparing her for this period she's entering into now. Next, with Saturn traveling, transiting through Leo, it's actually triggering something else in her chart. Saturn is now making a challenging or uneasy aspect, squaring, to her Pluto sitting in Scorpio in her eighth house. The eighth house topics are like death, taxes, sex, and other people's money. But I also put deep bonded relationships here as well. Scorpio is the sign of extreme. Black, white, no gray area. All in or all out. Usually no middle ground. She has two relationships start at this time and you can hear the extremeness of the relationships as she talks about it. One is with this guy. The other is with we. I also find it interesting Aquarius rules friends which she ended and gained from this relationship. Being that she is an Aries rising, Saturn would be in her fifth house of love relationships. Putting all this together, Saturn is traveling through her love zone, triggering the beginning of a bonded relationship, but also a end of a friendship. While having this relationship with him, interweave into the rat, that relationship is a relationship with we. During her relationship with him, she was all up in her south node in cancer. Think home, family, roots, your mom. And the way she talks about wanting to take care of him is kind of like mothering cancer. Claudia also has a Sagittarius moon. Sagittarius can be philosophers. Even though she finds herself struggling with her relationship with Weed, she still manages to give you a little perspective on her philosophy on the plant. It's interesting to me, it's like she feels it's a good thing in general, but struggling with, is it a good thing for her? The last thing I want to point out is even she even gives you a glimpse of her north node in Capricorn. Capricorn is a mountain goat and mountain goats climb mountains. Capricorn energy wants to rise the ladder of success. When she gives her future self a little shout out at the end, check out how she says, I know you're killing it. That was her soul speaking to herself, letting her know her mission. Will she make it? I don't know. I'm really not into predictions all that much, but I will say this. Her success actually has something to do with the time period she's entering into now and has everything to do with what happened during her Saturn opposition and the last 14 years. The universe showed her that she is different. Now, will she accept this difference and embrace it? Or does she see her difference as a hindrance and keeping her trying to fit in with the crowd? You see, 
Whichever decision she chooses can send her in two totally different directions, which neither one is right or wrong. It's also why most astrologers put the Saturn return in the top five of astrological events in a person's life. I've had a lot of people ask me if I'm psychic. Well, we all have some psychic ability, but what I mostly do is listen to the what and how people are expressing energy. If you get familiar with energy expression and pay attention, you too could pick this up and guess people's signs just by paying attention to the what, when, where, how of energy expression. A little disclaimer, you cannot just listen to someone talk and figure out their whole birth chart, but you can pick up aspects of their sun, moon, or rising signs. I just knew her chart before listening to the recording. That's how I was able to pick up on the other aspects I described. Feel free to rewind back to the story and listen to it again, keeping in mind these aspects as you listen to her tell her story. Now, I want to thank you for joining me for episode number 10, A Tale of Two Loves. Hopefully, I have 10 more episodes in me to hit another mile marker. I was thinking of lowering it to 5, but 10 sounds like a nice round number. If you could like, subscribe, share the show with a friend, I really would appreciate that. If you would like help with your birth chart, log on to IamAstrologyReadings.com, go to the book online, or if you like a custom t-shirt, you can go to the P-Dub collection on the website and we can work it out. Or you can send me an email at IamAstrologyReadings at gmail.com. Thank you again, and until episode 11, know thyself and balance your energy. Flabbergasted, you choke your little bastard. Hard times you know we have it, cause times is getting drastic. So back up off me, you're softy. That stress is too weak. Token feelings, what side you? Boy, villains in the street. Blow all night, volcanic eruptions. Lung filled up for spontaneous combustion. You're lunching on this bombest thing you ever tasted. Split the blunt, roll it, light it, sit some drinking. I'm wasted at a 50 blunt session. Them puff mode, then the Pope gives out blessings and confessions. My third eye just opened up. Kick back, relax, create this funky stuff as I puff. Tie, indoor northern lights on a platter. My mind scatters, busting new subject matter. Off the icky, sticky green. Just because I puff every day, am I a fiend? It's a dream. Plus chronic feels, demonstrating skills. All the bonus real or real, tingle what I feel. Throughout my whole body, assist by a blunt like magic dishes to Vladi. One, two, 